الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Since this holy month of Ramadan is upon us, and it is a time of great sacrifice and striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's important to remind ourselves of the importance of sincerity and following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our fast, and in fact in all of our deeds in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabihi al-kareem, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, the one who created life and death, in order to see which of you, uh, to test you and to see which of you would do the best of deeds. قال فضيل ابن عياد هو أخلصه وأسوبه. قالوا يا أبا علي ما أخلصه وأسوبه فقال إن العمل إذا كان خالصا ولم يكن سوابا لم يقبل وإذا كان سوابا ولم يكن خالصا لم يقبل حتى يكون خالصا والسواب وخالص أن يكون لله والسواب أن يكون على السنة so Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the salaf al-salih, one of our pious predecessors, he said, when explaining this verse, where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says about himself, he said, the one who created uh, death and life to test you and see which of you has the best deeds. So Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahimahullah ta'ala, said in regards to this ayat, he said, huwa akhlasuhu wa aswabuhu. He said that it is the one who is most sincere and most correct. And then they said, O oh, Abu Ali, what is the most sincere and the, the most sincere of it and the most correct? Then he responded by saying, that the deed that is sincere, the mo that is done sincerely, and the correct, and if it is not correct, then it will not be accepted. And if it is correct, if the deed is done correctly, or it is sound, and it is done without sincerity, then it will not be accepted. Until it is done with sincerity and correctly and sincerity means that it is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and correctly means that it is done in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he read a verse thumma qara qawluhu ta'ala فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّي فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا So then Fudayl ibn Iyad, after explaining that, explaining what is the most correct and what is the most sincere of deeds, and that those are the conditions for having our deeds accepted in Islam, he read the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then whoever wishes to meet his Lord, then he should do righteous deeds and not associate any partners with his Lord in worship. So that ayah there, that verse, it illustrates for us the same principle that Fudayl ibn Iyad was illustrating for us, and that is that we should be sincere. We should do righteous deeds, and righteous deeds, they are built upon those two conditions. First, in order for it to be a righteous deed, it needs to be sincerely done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, that it should be done in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa qala ta'ala, wa man ahsanu deenan mimman aslama wajuhu lillah wa huwa muhsan. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the Almighty, He said, 
and which is whose religion is best than whose religion is better than the one who submits himself submits his face strictly to Allah and he is a Muslim and he is one who is righteous for Islam al wajh Islam al qasd wal amal lillah so here in this verse Islam aslam al wajhu it means that he submits and his intention and his deeds are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in the verse, al-ihsan fihi, meaning the, the, to have ihsan here, that, that righteousness or uh, is, is explained as mutaba' rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so being righteous in our deeds as well, is explained as following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Sunnatuhu and his Sunnah, his path. وقال تعالى وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْطُورًا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan He says Subhana that we have Put forth righteous deeds, and we have uh, we have made them that that the one who has put forth uh, has put forth righteous deeds without sincerity. Then they have been made to be like dust in the wind. So none of us wants our deeds. To be like dust in the wind. We want our deeds to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has been explained in regards to that verse. وَهِيَ أَعْمَالَ أَلَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَى غَيْرِ السُنَّةِ أو أُرِيدُ بِهَا غَيْرَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ So he said that in relation to the verse that we just read that the reason that they became like dust in the wind, meaning the good deeds, and Allah explained them as good deeds. However, they became like dust in the wind because, meaning having no benefit, no fruits, because they were deeds that were done not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or they were deeds done that were not done sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is imperative that we strive now during this holy month of Ramadan to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fast in accordance with the Sharia rulings, that which was legislated in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it an obligation upon us to fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Wa kutiba alaykum, kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba al-ladina min qablakum, la'allakum tattakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, that we have made it an obligation upon you to fast. Similar to the to those who uh, came before you, in order that you would obtain piety or God fearfulness. So that's our purpose in fasting, is to hold on and do those deeds which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered us to do. In order that we would become pious, in order that we would humble ourselves, we would come closer to Allah. We would do his commands. We would stay away from his prohibitions. So the fasting is a time, fasting the holy month of Ramadan, is a time to reflect. It's a time to read Quran. It's a time to, to reflect on the verses of, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-ayat qawniya wal-ayat shari'iya, meaning the verses in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, the signs in his creation, the, the bahar, the sea, the sun and the moon, the stars, 
the uh, various things that we learn in life. Those are the signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the lessons we see from His creation. And the ayat shari'iyah, those verses are the verses that are in the Qur'an. So by reflecting upon the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, pondering its meaning, this is what we're ordered to do during this holy month. And this will help us to be of those of the muttaqun, as Allah described the person who fasts, that they would obtain piety, or that the person that the purpose of fasting is to obtain piety. So we want to be of those people who get rid of some of our get rid of all of our, our bad deeds, but especially after Ramadan that we can keep those positive habits up and staying away from those bad habits that we obtained uh, throughout the year and that we practice, but we want to remove those things from our lives and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And going back to the main point is that the only way that we can do that and have an acceptable fast during the holy month of Ramadan or other than the month of Ramadan, or has a successful prayer, salat, zakat, uh, hajj, or any of the acts that we do, is they have to be what? with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and secondly, in accordance to the sunnah, or in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who fast the holy month of Ramadan and have ex accepted. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to have a beautiful Ramadan and be of those people who meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with righteous deeds pleasing to him subhana and accepted by him wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam